Hey, what's going on, everybody? So, back from the card show, getting things, you know, situated and everything. Went to pull the videos off of um, the GoPro. Not videos, no joke, had sound. I guess when I turned it on, I must have fat fingered the back and hit slow mo. And when I did it, it was like everything was really drug out. I tried using it and like speeding it up. And it just really looked like crap. So luckily there was not a whole lot of things to uh, really show that was unique there. There was some nice vintage. Um, trying to think what else I saw there. A lot of retail, of course, was there. Uh... I'll go with some of the pickups. You saw most of those originally. There were some people that were using Beckett to uh, price their stuff. I haven't heard that one in a while. Now this, I just put up on the screen. I want to show everybody. A guy brought this up to my table. We were sitting there talking about rare, weird cards. This is historic DNA. It's a piece of hair from the mane of secre or Secretariat. And it had a weird numbering on back, like out of 288 or something like that. Believe it or not, people are paying like four to five hundred dollars for this card. And I just thought it was the craziest thing I've ever seen come uh, out of something other than the remember the uh, fossil cards and stuff that you got out of uh, oh, what was that? Not Allen and Ginter. Um, oh, I can't even think of what it's called. It's the one with the rip rip cards and all that. Was that Alan? No, it's not Alan Ginter. I can't remember what it is. It might be Alan Ginter. My brain's fried from today, but it's a Topps product that, you know, you go through it and you can get weird artifacts and stuff into it. I know somebody will correct me. I, I'm just like brain dead right now from talking cards for like, I don't know, 12 hours of the day, basically, even on the phone afterwards and stuff like that. But I thought you guys liked to see this because I did get a picture of it on my phone. Um, do apologize. I didn't get really a good video of the show, but it really wouldn't have been a whole lot to show into it to begin with. I'm going to pull this down. Uh, the one thing I wish I could have showed, somebody brought arrowheads and stuff in up there, which is really, really cool. And I was thinking about buying some arrowheads, and I'm like, I don't know what I'd do with them. So first off the bat, you guys seen these earlier. 58 topses, really, really good shape. I'm hoping maybe some sixes on to it. The guy uh, told me to give me, like, I think it was like 20% off. Then when I was a dealer, he's like, oh, you're here? He cut me a great deal on both of these. Way, uh, way cheap, way cheap. So when he came back and wanted to box a 2022 Series 1 toss, I didn't recognize and felt bad. So I gave it to him really, really cheap to make up for giving me these. So really cool. This one, uh, Maze and Snyder's on it. I'm hoping, I, because of what I have in these, I'm really not afraid to chance at sixes and spend, like, economy of 50 bucks, at least on the Hank. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But I'm really, really happy with this. I mean, I don't think it's going to be a seven or eight or a nine. I mean, it has a little bits on the corners here. But really, really cool cards. Really cool for vintage. Mr. James, if you see this, let me know if you want a Dylan Carlson Topps Chrome Black Auto. Email me. If not, if I don't see anything from you here in a day or two, I'll email you about it. I don't want to put this in a store without offering that to you first. All right, some other pickups. I got them in new cases. You guys probably seen them earlier. Let's start with, uh, I did a little trade in cash with somebody on like... Two finest Sancho's from last year or the year before. It's like a second year. PSA 10s and a Sting Auto that I had. And I wanted to grab a couple of different things from the store. This is the blackboard. Of course, it's going to have whiting on it and stuff. You can see top right corner and all that. But Chris Paul's Bowman rookie card. Something different. Uh, from a 98.99 finest with coding, Paul Pierce. 8.5, but I'm I'm trying to look at this at the show. Hold on, let me get the focus back here. There you go. 
The Surface got an 8. I don't know if it's because of the coating or what on there. But, I don't know. I'll put it in the store just in case somebody's really interested into it. I mean, they, they those two will not be expensive at all. I think the Paul's around like a $10 card. And I don't even know what that is. Maybe 10 bucks too. Who knows? But, I had to throw something in to make it kind of even on his end. So, we did a little cash and stuff on too. So, I threw those in. All right. So, this is the stuff I picked up all from... One person. He had a ton of different, like, relics and stuff. It was just crazy. So, first off the bat, I'm surprised this don't sell for more, but it is Panini Honors. But if you look, you can see the Yankee logo on this. So, it shows a one-time frame. Oh, this is Playoff Honors. It was by Panini, wasn't it? No, no. Play playoff was its own thing. Okay. No. Yeah, Don Russ. Don Russ. I'm sorry. Don Russ had the licensing then. Man, I'm trying to remember my licensing. Told you, I'm brain dead today. Some whiting on too, you can see down here and everything like that. But Jeter, bat thing, bat, bat thing, <laughs> bat used relic. I want to say the, I saw this for like 15 bucks on eBay. So something cheap, a Jeter collector might want it. Like I said, I try to pick stuff up you guys might like. Um, Barry Bonds, this has a piece of the home plate. Event used home plate. Home Run Challenge 2003. Has some whiting on it. I mean, all this stuff is because people back then just didn't take care of cards like they should have. It's expected. I, I don't know the price on that. I, I know most of these are probably were like $10 to $25 cards. Then we got Don Russ Classics Dress Code Pujols. And I made sure all my Pujols was in Cardinal stuff. That looks like that's a piece of lumber in there. Yep, it says bat. Numbered out of 50. This was really cool. Pujols, Game Gear, I guess they call it, used memorabilia, and eight authentic ticket stub from 2008. Really like this from Tops. Out of 239. I haven't looked any of this up yet in the store for you guys. By the time this video posts, it'll be in the store. Minus the Carlson. Another Pooh Holes. This is out of Tops again. I think Tops Chrome. Yep, Tops Chrome. 2003 Tops Chrome. Eyes look bad. Pretty cool. Has a little piece of the jersey into it. Nice shiny. And finally, this is from Upper Deck. Has to have whiting and all that normal edge wear and stuff. But quad jersey pieces onto it. Poo holes. I want to say when I looked at this, it was 2004? Nope. 2009. My eyes are bad. 2009, Series 1. So a little few things different for the store. Uh, I'm going to get it cleaned up. It'll already be cleaned up by the time you guys see it because a lot of the stuff I sold at the show um, just wasn't a whole lot I wanted to really, you know, had the urge to go spend. It's got to be the right stuff for, you know, either the store or for myself. Uh, there was hockey there, which surprised me, but it wasn't like anything that, you know, I had to get a hold of. Soccer was really big because I was like one of the few people with soccer. I think I only came back with two soccer cards left. <laughs> kind of kind of crazy there. Um, people were looking for oddball stuff at this show. I mean, at least with me, because I know I had at least three or four dealers ask me how I did the show. And I'm like, man, I you know, have a lot of green in my showcases. My dollar box is probably down to about... You know, 80% left in both of them. And they're like, oh man, yeah. People weren't really buying us. So, uh, I don't know. I don't know if it's pricing, but the other thing is a lot of people all selling the same exact thing. Like retail boxes, retail products, retail hits. You know, it, it kind of gets to a point to where it's overload for people. They want to see different stuff out there. And I kind of understand that completely. Now, I was telling Joey, I did see a LaMelo, two LaMelo Genesis there. 
One was three grand, and Joey correct me along because I'm kind of forgetting. I can't remember if I told you twenty seven or twenty eight hundred on the other one. Um, but I, it just starts making me think now because I think I've now seen at least ten of them that I know people have pulled or seen at shows. So I'm not too sure how plentiful those have been this year completely. But overall, really, really good show. Um, it's not because I sold a lot or anything like that. The people were there. The, I mean, conversations galore. I wish you could have hear. I would have had a couple of the conversations just for you guys. Um, there was an older gentleman that came by. I didn't have him on camera, but you could hear the conversation about when he was younger and he threw his arm out and stuff like that, playing baseball. And it, it just like because of uh, just how he describes the whole uh, thing out there, you could like actually picture it. It was just it was crazy. I love stories like that. And then hearing about like how somebody's grandfather or father gave him like 40s cards and stuff like that. It's how they started. And, you know, it's just amazing hearing stuff like that out there. I even have a gentleman I got to give a call to. He has a bunch of like 80s football stuff he's looking to move. And I told him I'd be interested like in the Rices, Montanas and stuff. So we'll see what that comes out to. I mean, he said he put them all in binders. So that, that could be scary. Could be good, too. But that was pretty much it with the show. Like I said, just a lot of talking. And, I mean, a lot of people coming by. Um, I know a lot of people always ask me this. I would say if you take away the top Series 1 boxes, I only had two cards sell at $100 or more. Everything else was like $20 to maybe like $50, $60. And I mean, of course, people were like getting three or four of those cards put together, but I didn't see any like big splashes. I didn't hear anybody buying anything, you know, big out there across the board, but definitely a lot of new um, dealers out there, connections, because it was like a two hour drive west, new time zone, all that stuff, especially uh, with the two guys, the uh, older guys, the vintage, really nice to work with. And, you know, they're like, oh, are you flipping this stuff? And I said, no. I said, no, if I have it and this grade's lower, then the answer is yes. But if the grade's higher, I flip my other one type deal. I said, I don't want to be a hoarder no more of stuff. So we'll see what happens on to it. Because um, I looked this up. I already have a PSA 5 of this card here. Because back before the boom, I was actually building PSA sets. I don't even have them registered yet as stuff. Um I was working on sets from 58 through 61. So that's what you'll probably see me pick up a lot of that stuff occasionally. And some of the stuff I might just start going to like player collections. I don't know yet. I'm trying to figure out my next move. My next move on to what I want to be a collector again of. And where I want to move stuff around to. Maybe maybe uh, one day you guys will see where I just start selling the big stuff. And it's, you know, end game to where... Uh, I want to say I stopped collecting, but I really, really downsize a lot of my bigger stuff. But all right, guys, appreciate y'all watching. Um, thank you for the guys that came in this morning for the three minutes I went live because I had no idea if that was going to work and trying to figure it out was a little bit crazy. So it's good to know that worked. Um, I think when I set up in March, I'll go live again like that. Uh, just to sh give a walk around show around up in Louisville to. Uh, Chad, who was sitting next to me in Scott's show. Um, and then after that, you probably won't see me setting up it much more until uh, my mom comes back down for the summer. That way I can get out more and not have to worry about stuff around here, especially when you got like dogs and stuff, just painful leaving them home for like 10 to 12 hours. But all right, guys, take care. Have a good one. I'll catch you all next video.